So the great thing with arriving in the US is that there is Wi-Fi everywhere. Free Wi-Fi everywhere. Hi and welcome to my channel, Savor the Moment. Um, thank you for joining me today. Please remember to like and subscribe on this page and on my channel. Um, I have some great tips ahead for you guys. So please, please, please watch to the end so that you are fully prepared if you are ever hired as an H2B visa worker. So in this video today, um, I'm going to be going through a little bit of tips that uh, I wish I had known when I had gone to the States the first time around. And you know, for the most part, your recruiting agent, if that's who you've gone through would have given you like the very general run of the mill okay and although I'm not going to be serving tea because I haven't there aren't any hidden things that they don't tell you about they're really straightforward about everything but there are certain things that you know they just don't really speak about or they do but you know you, you kind of get just too much information um, so I'm here to reiterate what you need to know <laughs> about going overseas and extra things that are super valuable, like I said, that I wish I had known. So first up that we're going to discuss is your working hours, okay? So as an HGB visa worker, remember you're going to be in the food and beverage industry, in the hospitality industry. So you could have any number of jobs. You could be a golf caddy, you could be a server, a bartender, a hostess. It's endless, okay? There's also things called runners. Um, <laughs> And although you aren't running on the track, believe me, that's how it feels when you are doing the job. A runner, essentially, just to give you a quick overview of what that is, you are literally running the food from the kitchen to the table of the patrons. That's all you're doing, okay? Um, so that's a quick insight into what that is. So essentially, those are the main roles that you'll be doing, okay? If there are other specific things uh, that end up coming up within the country clubs, because certain country clubs are really big, so there will be tons of things for you to do. Uh, you'll even be like, what are those guys called valets? Where you'll literally get to drive people's fancy cars. Like that's also super cool. So depending on what role you're going on, the baseline for working hours, um, unless I think if you're a chef, which is slightly different. So obviously I'm not gonna speak about that because I don't really have a lot of insight there, but is 40 hours a week. So what that generally looks like is pretty much eight hours a day for four, for five or six days in the week, okay? So obviously you will be earning according to the hours you work. So let's say you're working $10 an hour and you're going to be working eight hours a day. That's $80 literally every day for the week and then you've got your 40 hours. If you exceed that, okay, and this is what generally happens in the food and beverage industry, because there will be crazy events that you'll get to do, there'll be golf events, there'll be weddings, there'll be parties, there will be overtime. So overtime is worked out at your salary times a half. So what that means is if, you're, if your um, hourly rate, as a simple example, is $10, you're going to be earning $15 once you've passed your 40 hour mark. So that brings me to my next point, clocking in and clocking out for your shift. So <laughs> it drives the managers nuts if you do not stick to clocking in and clocking out for your shift. The reason why I say that guys is you can lose a lot of money if you aren't vigilant and also just be responsible. <laughs> like tell people how much you're working so they can pay you right. And of course there are mistakes and nine times out of 10 managers will be totally understanding and it's hard to get around sometimes because each clocking system can be different, but just make sure that that is something that you are on all the time, okay? Be super vigilant about that. The next thing that I'd like to just obviously let you guys know about is that you're paid bi-weekly. So bi-weekly means every two weeks, which is amazing because that money just keeps rolling in, okay? But don't forget, you still have bills to pay and just because you think you've worked a certain amount of hours, they obviously will do all the necessary deductions. So deductions will be, like in South Africa, we have our um, tax uh, deduction that will come off of your salary, on your bi-weekly salary, okay? You also have your housing um, prior costing that will be deducted from your salary. Um, and any other incidentals, so there might be like a deposit fee that they might uh, take from your salary for the first few months. Your deposit fee might be for your apartment that you're going to be staying at. So just remember, 
don't overcapitalize on what you might be getting. Make sure you <laughs> don't overspend on your money either so that you have enough to last you for each bi-weekly segment. But also save, guys. Like, you're earning dollars, it's great money, and if you're wise about how you spend your money, you can accomplish a lot of things. So definitely think about those things as well, okay? And the next thing that we will be chatting about is uniform. So, what I do want to tell you is shoes is like the best piece of advice I can ever give you. I did not realize <laughs> how much getting a good pair of shoes will change my life. So some country clubs will buy shoes for you when you arrive and that can sometimes be a little bit of a bummer only because they're looking at like super hectic safety shoes. So those are like the makeups of shoes, they're super chunky. Um, <laughs> so you're going to have to look at ways to protect your feet. You can get really comfy uh, slip insoles, um, and those are really great. You can also get like little rubber bits and pieces that can fit around your toe and around your heels. Um, because when, when you're on your feet for like 14 hours and you've done a hectic double shift, honestly, the one thing you don't want to be worrying about is having to have super crazy blisters. I've done it it killed my soul okay so if you have the opportunity to buy your own shoes please invest in a good comfy pair make sure that you can stand on those shoes for a few hours and like without saying if you haven't had to be in the food and beverage industry for a little while and you're going back into it your feet will kill you regardless of what you do <laughs> so there is one bit of tea just a little bit a sip that i'll give you a really cool trick that I learned, okay, um, apart from soaking your feet every day, if, if you have the opportunity to do that, is to get a tennis ball. And I don't know why, but somehow it works, but rolling your foot over the tennis ball somehow releases the muscles. It helped me. If it helps you guys, great. If you have some tips though to share with any of us on how to look after your feet if you are in the service industry, please share them because that is honestly gold. You are on your feet all day, every day. They carry us through life, okay? So let's let's just be deep about it for a second. <laughs> they actually carry us through life. So if you have a great tip for all of us to recover from the pain of being on our feet all day, that'll be great. Please put it in the comments below as well. So next on the agenda that I'd like to chat about is transportation to and from work. So in some cases, the country club will have organized transportation, which is fantastic be on time <laughs> is all I'm gonna say because they will not wait for you um, and fortunately we're, we're in the day and age where you could literally catch an uber or um, another service I'm sure there are so many more at the moment not just uber but there are different ways that you can get to work other than transportation so in some cases some country clubs will give you bicycles uh, some country clubs will literally tell you get on a train and get to work. So you have to be really responsible. You have to know what the train lines are doing. If the train lines or whatever, for whatever reason you are late, always inform your manager. It's all about communication at the end of the day, guys. And just be, just be vigilant, be accountable. You know, the one thing you don't want is to get on your manager's bad side because you're late. So if it means having to wake up 15 minutes earlier, then do it, <laughs> okay? Being early for work is better than being late and remember whether you're five minutes late or 30 minutes late you're still late so rather leave a lasting impression of being on time because that's super important okay so that is something that the kind of your recruiting agency will let you know about um, but in some cases you'll only really know the ins and outs of that when you arrive so don't have too much anxiety about that um, in some cases you know you might have some other servers that have cars that are already there or local Americans that won't mind picking you guys up. So there's always different ways to get about it. Um, so don't worry too much about the transportation. You'll always be covered. Um, it's just that in some cases you might have to do it on your own. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's my tip about transport and moving on to the next tip. The other thing I really want to mention to you guys is driving in the US. So if like, myself and my boyfriend we're going to be in florida which is the sunshine state you are able to drive on your local driver's license so if you're south african or you're coming from anywhere else in the world you can drive on your local driver's license for up to a year 
What that means is you don't have to go and get an international driver's license. Although what I do want to say is that it's probably easier just to get a, a local driver's license when you get to the States. It's not very difficult, but I also want to just make a point. Just because I've said it in this video <laughs> doesn't mean that the rules won't change. So please always double check, double check the country you're coming from, the validity of your driver's license, how long you can drive in that specific state. And just remember every state is different. So just because Florida has that leniency, it doesn't mean that a South Carolina or a Texas or a New York will have the same rule. Um, also, if you're on the H2B visa, which is really cool, you can actually get a driver's license. So that's really nice. Um, and obviously, in the States, you can get a driver's license if you're 16 and above. So if you're going to the US and you're young, like how I was, you can get a driver's license. What I do want to say is that if you are under the age of 21, it is a little bit more tricky to rent a car. But just like in South Africa, it's the same. If you're under the age of 25, it's also a bit more tricky to rent a car. So just keep that in mind. Um, you might not be able to just draw all over the place, but fortunately there are so many transport options. So you literally won't be stranded, which is amazing. So that is a really great tip. I wish I had known before I had gone to the States. And I mean, if you had watched my previous videos, I was 19 when I went. So I literally didn't know anything. I had just gotten my driver's license in South Africa. I was petrified to drive on the other side of the road, but I am very excited to drive in the States this time around. And we'll definitely do a video for you guys on that one. So you can see me screaming because that's probably what I'll do. <laughs> the other tip that I want to speak about is banks. So when I went, um, in 2009, the recruiting agency actually helped us set up our bank accounts with a specific uh, bank. And what was really cool is they came to the country club, they literally signed you up on the spot and then we got our cards delivered. So that was super, super helpful. And what I do want to say is there are a couple of main banks. So there is um, Fargo, there's Chase, there's Bank of America. And if you have the option to choose your own bank, I would definitely say, have a look around, look at what works for you, look at the fees, um, the service delivery, you know, just, just all of that. And also what's really nice to sort of have a look at is what are the, the banks, the main banks that are gonna be in your area? Because you don't wanna get a bank where you literally have to travel hell and gone just to go to the branch for if there are any issues. So that, that for me is a really great tip. Um, you know, it's always nice to see what the different options are. So you're not just walking into something that you literally don't have a choice for. And just a quick side note. Um, so in South Africa, we have something called a debit card, okay? Okay. And a debit card is if you have X amount in your account and you spend said X amount, there is no overdraft. Okay, there's no overdraft facility on those kind of accounts. However, <laughs> I learned the hard way by mistake. On my account, I swiped not realizing that I didn't actually have enough in my account. And I went into a debit, literally uh, an overdraft and had no idea. I had a meltdown <laughs> because I didn't realize that we had an overdraft amount and the, the interest on that was pretty high. So just make sure that you're getting all of this kind of information. What are the overdraft facilities if they are on the debit cards? You know, online banking, how easy or difficult is it? Um, the service fees, your interest rates, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, obviously, if you're getting a debit card, there, there'll be certain service fees for your account. But yeah, just definitely do your homework. Um, it will help at least then when you make your choice or if you've been given the, a certain bank because that's what the recruiting agency has arranged for you, you know exactly what you're getting. The other tip that I want to talk about and just speaking about different options is network providers. So the great thing with arriving in the US is that there is Wi-Fi everywhere, free Wi-Fi everywhere. Wi-Fi in McDonald's, Wi-Fi in the parks, Wi-Fi in the shopping malls, Wi-Fi in a grocery store. There is Wi-Fi everywhere. So you won't really struggle too much for the first couple of days or weeks that you are there. But what I do want to recommend is get a local SIM. The three top brands that come to mind that I have always seen advertise, advertising for is AT&T, then there's Verizon Wireless, um, or Verizon Network, and the other one is T-Mobile. 
So those are the main three. Obviously, there'll be a couple of more options. But there again, I'm going to just reiterate, have a look at the different options. What is it going to cost you? What is the service? Uh, do you have good signal in that area? Um, and you can make a decision from there. Don't splash on the most expensive package before you've done your research, because if you can get it cheaper elsewhere, why not? Okay. I am the bargain queen, so I will forever hunt for three options at least. And just so that I have peace of mind that I've definitely made the right choice, especially when it comes to network, because you know, that's something that you're going to be using while you're running around the States. Um, what's really cool is that a lot of the providers will give great data packages that aren't crazy expensive um, <laughs> and very unusual for us South Africans because data is so crazy expensive, it's ridiculous. So have fun with that. Um, don't be daunted by the fact that there are so many options. I generally stick to three, just so I don't overwhelm myself. So that is a little bit of an insight tip for you guys. The other thing I wanna chat about is taking money. So your recruiting agency, if you've gone through with a recruiting agency, will probably give you a recommended amount to take with you. I'm not sure what they recommend at this point. And if you know, and you're happy to share with all of us, please share in the comments below. Let us know what your recruiting agency always recommends that you take with you. Um, but generally, I feel like a $300 to $500 mark isn't too bad. You know, if you've saved and you can exchange that money, Honestly, it helps. So the reason why it's great to take that money, and this is why the recruiting agencies will insist that you have X amount to take with you, is because when you arrive, you may have to Uber yourself around to get what you need. You may have to get some groceries. You know, you might get a, an accommodation, um, which is what I'll chat about next. But in some cases, you may get to accommodation that is fully furnished, but there might be bits and pieces you may still need. And you, you know, like all of these basic things for survival are important. The last thing you want to do is to be freaking out and struggling and you're on the other side of the world. And now you're in panic stations because you don't have the basic necessities. So take as much as you can, not an exorbitant amount, but take enough. And the reality is, is that $300 or $500, it sounds like a little, but when you convert it into rands, it's a lot of money, but it can get you far, okay? There are shops like the Dollar General. It is my favorite store in the world because you can get so many things that cost a dollar. And what's great is that if you need a broom, if you need like little knickknacks in the house to literally help you stay comfortable, it is inexpensive. You do not have to buy the most expensive thing for stuff in your house, okay? Um, especially because you're not gonna be there for very long. You're gonna be there for six months and move on, right? So don't over overcompensate either. Um, just get the basics that you need. Um, and then at least you have a little bit of money for groceries and running around and whatever, okay? And also you're gonna wanna try a couple of things when you arrive and you don't wanna, you don't wanna be left out because you, know, you just you didn't plan right. So make sure that you take the recommended amount that your recruiting agencies have given you. And if you can take a little bit more, why not? If you can't, that's also okay. Everybody's coming from different circumstances when they're going to the States. So it's not always easy to take this huge amount of money, but if you can, like I said, do it. Like I said, we're going to be chatting about housing, okay? So just a sidebar here. Now, <laughs> if any of you have watched Schitt's Creek and they stay in that motel, so we stayed in something quite similar, but not exactly the same. So what our company did is they actually had this motel converted into apartments, which was freaking cool, okay? Um, and I had a roommate, so we had a one bedroom apartment and I had a roommate, so her and I shared and we had a beautiful walk-in cupboard, the first time I'd ever seen a walk-in cupboard. We had a functional kitchen, we had a cute little lounge area with a small little telly, um, cable TV is life by the way, and we had a nice size bathroom. So that was our situation. In some circumstances, you won't be in a converted motel, okay? Keeping in mind, guys, I went in 2009, so it was a long time ago, but you might be sharing a three bedroom house and two people are in each bedroom and you have to share communal area. So what I do wanna say is be prepared for sharing your space. Be um, prepared to live amongst other people. Be communicative. Talk about how you guys are going to 
live together in this house you know I, it's it's not a bad idea to go okay well who's gonna do dishes or laundry or whatever obviously everybody will be set to do their own laundry but you know shit happens sometimes <laughs> so you know you, you just want to be able to have a symbiotic happy living environment so like clean off to yourself these are just the basic common things wash up your dishes if you leave dishes like don't be that person um don't eat other people's food also you know if you do decide to do communal grocery shopping which is what i ended up doing with my housemate it was just so much easier and fortunately it was just her and I, so it wasn't too difficult. If there was a specific thing she bought because she liked, I knew it, I could see it straight away. But if you're living in a house with like six people or eight people, it can get a bit overwhelming. So, you know, it's good to have these conversations and don't be shy and don't be aggressive about it. Everybody appreciates it when everybody's considerate. So just keep that in mind. The other thing, <laughs> noise complaints, so, let me tell you, we had an old man living across the road from us. The time limit for noise in the week was like 10 p.m. By five past 10, the cops were already at our house. They don't play games, okay? If they are called, they will rock up. It's not South Africa and they are hardcore. So do not get into trouble with the law because you will be sent home, okay? And the recruiting agencies, if you go through them, are super hardcore about it because it's true. They are not saying it to scare you. That is how it is. Do not get behind the wheel and drive. Do not ever do that if you have been drinking. Rather Uber yourself or sleep wherever the hell you are if it's safe. <laughs> Do not do that because you will get into so much trouble and that puts your life at risk and other people's lives at risk. It's just not worth it. Noise complaints are a thing. My manager used to get text messages when we got noise complaints. So we would get to work the next day crapping ourselves because we knew he knew <laughs> that we were in trouble. <laughs> that kind of anticipation was hardcore. But I mean, all I want to say is you're going to have fun. You're going to get rowdy. Just be considerate and just know what the rules of the complexes are just so that you don't get into exponential amounts of trouble and you don't get sent home just because you're a troublemaker. Yeah, so just watch yourself on that. Um, and the one other thing that I want to speak about is making friendships. So I went in 2009, like I keep saying, <laughs> and the people that I went with for those six months, I am still connected to all these years later. This is insane. You bond with these people, you bond with all types of people that you're working with and you really do create friendships for life. So be open. You know, if, if you're like me who was really shy and super conservative and had so much anxiety about everything and so many insecurities, you know, I, I prohibited myself a little bit just because of the fact that I, I didn't know how to come out of my shell. But after a little while, I really did. And I, I have to tell you that it's life changing. You know, when you are open to trying new things and doing new things out of your comfort zone. And, you know, you might meet somebody that will want to, I don't know, go hiking for the day. And that's really not your thing. But you might end up doing it and you freaking love it. You know, so that's the, the other thing I want to speak about. And the last thing I want to speak about in this video is planning experiences. So... The whole essence of my channel is to savor the moment, right? And it doesn't matter what you're doing, you could be having a simple meal and having the most amazing conversation and that is a moment to truly savor. But if you have made the mission to go all the way to America and you don't do stuff, you're, you're missing out, you're cheating yourself. And I, obviously you're gonna be working super hard. So it's not always gonna be easy, but what I wanna say is sacrifice a little bit on that sleep and do the laundry when you've got the chance because having experiences and going to Disney, if you're in Florida and you're close enough, going to Disneyland is amazing. Going to Universal Studios, there is Six Flags, which is like a huge amusement park. There's water parks, there's so much for you to experience. Going to the Everglades, like it, it, it's unreal. There are so many things that you can do. And if you do it as a group, it can be sometimes cheaper because everybody pitches in. So, you know, don't close yourself off. Don't sleep away all your days off. Have those experiences, have those moments that when you look back, okay, and you're like, oh my God, 
I did that. I actually went and I, I did something completely out of the norm. And just as a simple example, I was 19, I was a baby. My biggest dream was to go to New York. I had wangled, dangled, worked my butt off and managed to convince my manager to give me four days. That's all I got, four days. I flew to New York. I was terrified. I took my roommate with me and we had the most magical time in New York. My neck was sore because I was so busy looking at all of the buildings. I couldn't deal at how incredible it was to be in a place that I had only ever dreamed about. And it was achievable. I saved, we booked our tickets. It was super easy. We had accommodation. It ended up I had family. They've since moved. <laughs> they are no longer there. Very distant family members, but still like crazy, crazy things. And it was just the most amazing experience that I could have ever done for myself so you know and, and I mean that's not the only experience I did obviously but I wish I had done more I wish I had done more because I was like I need to do my laundry or I need to sleep and you know as much as the saying is sleep when you did I hate that saying but honestly if the opportunity comes and you can do it do it so to end off this fabulous video, please like and subscribe and let me know about your experiences. Let me know about the cool experiences you've done that changed your life, that really had you thinking, this is a moment I'd love to savor for the rest of my life. Share that with us in the comment section. Please remember to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys next time.